Okay guys, here we go. Let's see how this works. I might have this too high right now. I can feel, I can feel all the, well, it's actually hard to drive like this. I can feel every single turn that I make. Oh, no, this is too much. Oh, oh shit. Hello everyone. Today we're going to find out if it's possible to build a racing motion simulator without using any motors or expensive equipment. We're going to use the BeamNG Drive game from Steam and try to connect it to the galvanic vestibular stimulation, aka mind control device, we built in the last video. So if you haven't yet seen that video, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. A motion simulator is a computer-controlled machine that tries to reproduce some of the forces you would actually experience inside a vehicle. It's often used to simulate race cars, but can also be used on a variety of other types of games such as flight simulators. It accomplishes this through the use of custom motion control software that translates movement from a video game into motion on the hardware. This requires an expensive machine built from several motors, depending on how many degrees of freedom and accuracy you desire. It's common for motion simulators to take up the space of a small room. So here's the idea. First, we will use the BeamNG Drive software. The nice thing about it is it supports the output of raw motion data. Next, we're going to take that raw data and send it to a custom piece of software that I wrote in Python. And that software will then take the acceleration and rotation data and convert it to a format that will work with the galvanic vestibular stimulation device we built in the last video. Next, the software will act as a UDP client and send the data to the UDP server running on the mind control device. So if everything works, we should have the most inexpensive motion simulator ever created. First, we need to know if galvanic vestibular stimulation, or GVS for short, works and whether it can change a person's sense of balance. If you saw the last video, you would already know the answer to this question. Let's do a little demo. All right, so I wanted to show you guys just how effective galvanic vestibular stimulation is at messing with your balance. So here's the app that we made in the last video. If you missed the last video, you can check it out by clicking the info link here or here in the corner. I'm going to place the gel electrodes behind my ears and just move the virtual joystick a bit. All right, so here we go. First, let's, uh, let's move it a little bit to the left. Whoa, already I'm, already I'm feeling, whoa. Already I was feeling a lot of imbalance uh, as if I was falling over to my left. Now let's try to go to the right. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. This is, you guys have to feel this. This is, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Whoa. <laughs> oh man. It's actually, it's actually hard to kind of maintain your balance. Whoa. <laughs> oh man. It doesn't hurt. It just feels like it feels like you're dizzy, or it feels like you're 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 leaning, uh, you're you're off balance, and you want to kind of almost you almost want to compensate. It feels like the the. 
the horizon has, has changed. Even though your eyes recognize the horizon hasn't changed, you just feel like it. It's kind of strange. Here we have BeamNG Drive. The first step is to enable motion sim support under the options menu. By going to other and clicking motion sim enabled. And in this menu, you can change the IP address. I just left everything default here. All right, now it's time to put on the hacker's hat and program the custom motion software. And here's the software. You can see off to the right hand side that we've got all the motion simulator data coming from BeamNG. The bars visually represent the magnitude of the acceleration forces in the X direction, with positive X acceleration representing an acceleration force to the left and negative acceleration to the right. The raw data is presented in tabular format below the bars and is just there for debugging purposes. Because BeamNG provides accelerations without taking into consideration the force of gravity, I had to use the roll angle and a little bit of trigonometry to calculate the actual forces including gravity. What this means in practice is if your vehicle is tilted, as shown here, due to driving on a hill or for whatever reason, you'll feel the force of gravity in, in the tilt. So here's another example where I tilt the vehicle up on its side and you can see the massive forces generated in the positive x direction and the negative x direction as the vehicle slams into the ground. Because we are only mapping the translation of a single dimension to our motion simulator, it would be considered one degree of freedom. I have no idea if it would be better to map the roll rotation instead of the translation of the x-axis. It might be something to try in the future. Because we are handling both the translation on the x-axis as well as an acceleration due to gravity when exposed via rotation, our motion simulator could be considered one and a half degrees of freedom, or some might even consider it a two degree of freedom simulator. A single rigid body has at most six degrees of freedom consisting of three translations and three rotations. All right guys, here we go. Let's give this a shot. Wow. Ah, you can feel every single turn that you made. It's just crazy. Ah, it's a little too much actually. Ah, and it makes it a little hard to drive. I. balance in that direction for example if I make a left turn here I, I feel like I feel like I'm off balance and I want to kind of catch myself fall to the left uh, wow okay I gotta stop making left turns this is, <laughs> this is too much let's uh restart actually I may have the power up a little too much Starting to make me a bit dizzy. Okay guys, we're back. I I tuned it down just a little bit, so let's see if this helps. Alright. Okay, that is a little bit better. I wish I could feel the acceleration of braking, but 
I, I don't feel the acceleration of braking, but I do feel the lateral acceleration. Wow. It's a little difficult to drive this way, actually. I don't know. I wonder if it has something to do with that. If it has something to do with that. Let's try changing the view. I wonder if that's going to help. All right. Let's do an in-vehicle view. Let's see if this helps a little. All right. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Guys, you gotta feel this. This feels pretty realistic. Like, you don't feel the G-forces. Oh, shoot. You don't feel the G-forces, but what you do feel, <clears throat> it's almost as if the car is moving. Like, you do feel, you feel the movements. Wow. Okay, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> It is a little hard to drive. It takes some getting used to, but wow, this is so much better. This view is so much better than the third person view that I was driving in previously. Wow. Man, the only thing I wish I could feel, oh, that made me dizzy. The only thing I wish I could feel are the acceleration and braking forces. I mean, if, wow. If we had those forces, it would make it so much more complete. But, I mean, even as it is right now, it's oh, it's pretty amazing. Like the turns, you feel like you're falling over. I, there's nothing to grab onto. Like I'm sitting in this chair and I, I'm scared I'm gonna fall out. Oh, wow, this would be so crazy in VR do something like this in VR. I think the, I mean, already the first person view is a lot better than the third person view. Like, oh, oh, that was, that really messed with my head there. All right. Wow. Okay, I'm getting tired of making left-hand turns. I keep feeling I'm going to fall over to the left. Wow. Okay. Let's make a Yeah, what I meant to say is, when I turn left, I, the forces are on my right side. Like, I feel I'm going to fall over to the right, actually. Which which makes sense. That's that's the way you would feel you're going to fall when you're... Or those are the forces you would feel if you were in an actual vehicle. Okay, so let's, uh, let's make some right-hand turns here. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't good. All right, let's try driving the pigeon. This is, for those of you that don't know, this is a three-wheel vehicle. This should be a lot of fun. Oh, oh, oh my god. This is crazy. Oh, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna get nauseous. Oh, oh no! Wow, look at those G-forces. Okay, let's drive straight. Let's turn. Oh, oh, wow, I wonder if this is how it really feels to drive. Oh, do a burnout. Okay. Let's see if we can flip this car. Alright, so let's try a little experiment here and see what kind of forces we can generate when we collide a Dansworth transportation school bus with a pigeon. So.
just let's just wait inside our little pigeon here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, let's try something a little different here and go on this test track. See if we can generate some G-forces with uh, with a couple of jumps or maybe even some crashes. Let's give it a let's give it a shot here. here go, man! I, I really wish I could feel the acceleration and deceleration. Okay, but this is not gonna be fun. Oh man! Ah! Oh, I landed on the side too. Ah! Okay, I I gotta recover. I feel like I'm falling right now. Okay. Let's try something different. Go for a crash here. something different. Let's see if we can go up this giant ramp in the background here. The only saving grace is I don't feel any of the forces when I accelerate or decelerate. So just kind of weird. Let's go up this ramp. Okay, so I'm, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm kind of uh, stuck on this ramp here at an, at an elevation and at a slight angle. There's about uh, 4.5 um, Gs, or not 4.5 Gs, 4.5 meters per second squared of acceleration in, in the right direction, the negative X direction. And I can feel that I'm falling over right now on my right hand side. It's just so strange. It's so weird. Okay, let's see if we can. Oh, is my car stuck? No, here we go. Ah. Whoa. I don't, I don't like this view. Okay, maybe this is a little bit better. Oh, whoa. Almost fell out of my chair. Thank you for watching, and if you like these types of videos and projects, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep making more videos in the future.